Toughen up, you weasel. There was a famous advertisement in the form of a comic strip issued a few decades ago by a bodybuilder, Charles Atlas. It was titled The Insult That Made a Man Out of Mac, and could be found in almost every comic book, most of which were read by boys. Mac, the protagonist, is sitting on a beach blanket with an attractive young woman. A bully runs by and kicks sand in both their faces. Mac objects. The much larger man grabs him by the arm and says, Listen here, I smash your face. Only you're so skinny you might dry up and blow away. The bully departs. Mac says to the girl, the big bully. I'll get him someday. She drops a prov uh, provocative pose and says, Oh, don't let it bother you, little boy. Mac goes home, considers his pathetic physique, and buys the Atlas program. Soon, he has a new body. The next time he goes to the beach, he punches the bully in the nose. The now admiring girl clings to his arm. Oh, Mac, you're a real man after all. This ad is famous for a reason. It summarizes human, sexual, psychology, and seven straightforward panels. The two weak young man is embarrassed and self-conscious as he should be. What good is he? He gets put down by other men and worse, by desirable women. Instead of drowning in resentment and sulking off to his basement to play video games in his underwear, covered by Cheetos dust, he, he presents himself with what Alfred Adler Freud and Freud's most practical colleague called compensatory fantasy. The goal of such a fantasy is not so much wish fulfillment as illumination of a genuine path forward. Mac takes serious note of his scarecrow-like build and decides that he should develop a stronger body. He should become a stronger person. More importantly, he puts his plan into action. He identifies with the part of himself that could transcend his current state and becomes the hero of his own journey. He goes back to the beach, punches the bully in the nose, Mac wins, so does his eventual girlfriend, so does everyone else. And not because of the act of violence, it's because he stood up for himself. He didn't, he didn't let his mother or father coddle him. Oh, it's okay, darling. You'll be okay. Don't, just don't go to that beach next time. Go somewhere else. You know, call the police. You know, go, make sure you, maybe bring some friends with you next time. Blah, blah, blah. Running away from the problem, as I have done in my life. I'm that kid. In many ways, I'm the cat kid. I'm, I'm, I'm Mac, right? And so I'm trying to, I'm, try, I'm trying to weed the softness out of my soul, mind, and body. I'm very aware of how I grew up, and I'm very aware that I wasn't. And I say this with all due respect, but I wasn't fortunate enough to grow up in truly tumultuous, difficult times. I say fortunate very purposefully. I think the most unfortunate circumstances turn into the most fortunate people. The, the Notice the funniest comedians. They come from the darkest backgrounds. Notice some of the most successful people in this world, athletes, entrepreneurs, businessmen and women, writers, authors, etc. It appears a large portion of them come from dark, uh, terrible times where they got picked on and they had to make a decision to turn into a better person. So if you have not gone through a dramatic amount of that, you have to create it within yourself. You have to create voluntary suffering to create character. Otherwise, the world is just going to step on, step all over you. And the world's gonna be fine for it. The world will, will enable you, in fact. It has never been a time where people have enabled this soft, weak, cushy type of behavior. And it sickens me to no end. Why? Because it reflects, it reflects a part of me. That's why. Not because I, <laughs> I, I want the world to be this picture perfect, ideal place. It's not gonna be. Because it reflects who I am and who I was and who I'm trying to be. It's personal. Maybe a bit too emotional. But I'm trying to use the emotion to propel me forward. Maybe you can too.